Hello everybody, it's Duke from FragTark.net and today I have a rather agonizingly long video that takes place in the Arma 2 mission editor. Uh, today we're debugging a mission, uh, one particular part of a mission that I've been working on for quite some time now. Uh, today we will be uh, playing Big Brother to a tank column uh, it actually starts off a tank column of 10, splits into two columns of five, and we're just watching the uh, AI and hoping that they don't screw things up miserably, which they have a tendency to do if you've ever spent any time in the mission editor and tried to create custom content for yourself. Um, I actually just love, love spending time in the mission editor because one of the big things about it is, is you can cater the game to just about well, to your play style. So whatever you're playing, it, you know you want to play it. The problem is, is the AI in Arma leaves a lot to be desired, particularly when driving vehicles. So you find yourself probably spending more time debugging than playing. What I'm trying here now is uh, this mission that I've been working on, I have, I'm have i splitting all of the elements apart and I'm debugging each separately. So today, again, that's what we're debugging. We're debugging the tank column itself. So that's just a fire. I use them as markers so I can see from the sky. Uh, the one thing I like to do whenever I'm debugging, particularly something like this, I like to take the uh, eye in the sky approach. So I'm going to get into a, a little bird here and watch these guys from up on high. Now this actually serves a dual purpose because one, I can see how uh, my mission is working out. And the other is I can hone my helicopter skylet my helicopter pilot skills because the one thing you will come to notice in rather short order is I am a lousy pilot. I mean, this shit's embarrassing. So anyway, here's the column. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's 10, 10 tanks down there. We're just gonna kind of circle around here again and uh, watch them post up to their rally point, which is actually the mission start. It's also your rally point. Uh, you will be pulling up in armor as well. You do not start off on the ground. You do. You are locked into armor because, well, we're basically posting up here because we are going to assault. What the hell is that town over there? It's Chartheract. And we're just going to make sure there's, uh, if there is any enemy presence there, we are going to neutralize these bastards. So you can see below all these tanks are posted up on these uh, objects here. These are actually H's in the uh, mission editor. Uh, I like to use them because they're very visible, so I can see uh, if the um, not only if the tanks are are posting up where they need to be on these markers or objects, whatever you want to call them, but also the route that they're taking, which is very important, at least to me, because I like to make sure that the tank column. Uh, the armor is the heaviest on the front, of course. Uh, it's it's okay on the sides, but you never want their back facing the mission. So it's actually taken me a long time just to figure out where these markers are supposed to go so the tanks will actually end up facing the war rather than turning their back to the war, which they have done frustratingly numerous times. Now, uh, you can see there's kind of a smoke column there in the background. That's actually the trigger. Once that's been tripped, that smoke column will actually disappear. Uh, I like using very visible cues to make sure that my triggers are working. And this is one element that just helps me know that the triggers are actually being tripped and they are working as intended. So you can see the last tank's pulling in there. And yes, indeed, he has hit the trigger. You can see the smoke is now dissipating. And I also use hint dialogues. If you take a look at the top right of your screen, you will see tank column 2, move position 2. So I figured I would take this tank column out first. Uh, first off, I split the column into two columns, and the reason is, is they are leapfrogging one another. I figure if they do hit a uh, rather overpowerful, or uh, I guess over overpowered enemy threat, it won't take out the entire column and break the mission. That's the theory, of course. It hasn't always worked, but uh, it's been rather successful. So you can see we're just following the tank column in. Their spacing is actually pretty good right now. You'll notice up to the left there, there is a, uh, a smoke plume. So that is indeed another trigger. You can even see the marker there. 
And I guess we're just going to pull in low here, and you can see some of the other markers. There's one here to the left. And we're just, um, I guess I'm trying to get fancy here. Yeah, there's another another marker here off to the right, you can see. And then there's one here kind of in the middle. I've had to move it. There's a little alley here to the left. Uh, this this marker, it's kind of a dumb spot for it, but I had to put it there. Otherwise, the tank always seems to want to go down that little alley. And if you've ever seen t tanks try and navigate a, uh, a city or even a couple of houses on their own, uh, it's utter chaos when they do it. They... Uh, you know, if they actually make it out of there, which sometimes they don't, they'll end up stuck against a building and just trying to move forward for minutes on end sometimes. Uh, they can turn their turret in a funny way and then Arma's uh, physics will take over and they'll end up on their roof or on their side or they'll just take enough damage there where the crew will jump out and just stand there and not really even look around while the war is going on around them. It's frustrating. So, you can see we're just uh, hovering over the tank column here. Uh, they're all taking their positions. Now, on when, when I'm debugging missions like this, a lot of times I will add counters to the triggers. Like, you'll notice the first trigger that we hit, uh, the activation was immediate. The smoke dissipated as soon as the tank hit it. But over here to the left, if I do ever turn to the left here, uh, the um, you'll see that the tank is actually in place but the trigger itself has not been tripped the reason for that is to allow all the other tanks to get into position Yeah, you can see the tank is in position but has not tripped the trigger so we're just waiting to see when that actually happens yep there we go he's finally done it the smoke is dissipating tank columns will move position two and three so this is the leapfrog effect that was talking about these guys are going to move up to their next position uh, one thing to note, the markers you will see, I've got the tank spread out rather far. Um, I have tried numerous, I've made numerous attempts trying to get them to move closer together in a, uh, a repeatable fashion, and they can't. They just bounce off one another. Um, if, they're, if they're not spaced far enough in the city, they will actually, one will move forward, one will go directly to one side, one will go directly to another side, and they always end up trapped somewhere in the in the city. So uh, just a hint, if you are interested in using tank columns and getting them to run through a, a, a city and keeping them on the road, give them spacing. They can see the spacing here. It's not terrible, but it could be it, they could be spaced out a bit bit more. Spaced out. Yeah, I think they're already spaced out. So I'm just going to pull an airwolf maneuver. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but maybe a bit too much coffee in me at this point. So these guys are going to post up, and I think we're going to go check out the next waypoint here for all the tanks. Um, I guess waypoints really isn't a fair term. I don't use waypoints. I don't like them. Uh, it's just more objects in the mission. I don't know if they. I don't know if they bog it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Epilepsy warning. Uh, I don't know if they actually, if they add more to the to the mission. I don't know, like more objects. I don't know if they bog it down. Uh, the reason I like using these little these little objects like this is I can delete them. Uh, I can actually delete delete them based on whatever trigger is getting tripped, so they may even miss their first first position or first rally point. So I just like them better than waypoints. They're easier to delete. They're easier to work with. I find. So these guys are posting up here. Uh, this is actually, um, it's got a bit of a defilade to the hill. There is a hill here to the left. I figure this is a good position because they have, they have some cover, They have, but they do have enough uh, visibility to be able to engage the mountain t straight ahead of us. Uh, the hill to the left, which there, this is a killing field. It's a bloodbath in this area here. And then the field to our left that you cannot see. Well, actually not field, it's kind of more of a hill. So they're all posting up. Looks like uh, we've got a straggler coming in. This is the guy that tripped the last trigger. Now, I don't know why I'm doing this. I just kind of hit hover here. Uh, the, the one thing that I don't do in Arma is I don't play in third person. I don't use these little hover cheats or anything in the helicopter. I don't think that if you buy a sim personally that you should use any cheats to play it in other, in other than a simulation fashion. That's just my point of view. 
but I've never understood why people would actually buy a, a simulator like this and then play in third person or use any level of cheats. It's never really made any sense to me, so it's kind of a side topic. I don't know why I brought it up, but there you have it. That's my point of view. Yours may differ, and that's fine, but this one happens to be mine, and I will die with it. So these guys have all posted up. You can see they've just taken over the positions of the last tanks. I realize it's not terribly dynamic and you know but I have, I have wasted literally 40 50 plus hours trying to make it more dynamic and unfortunately I ended up losing tanks uh, tanks died not because they were engaged not because they were destroyed by the enemy they died because they ran into one another they took enough damage or they flipped over on the roof or they did something stupid and they were taken out of the war and it's it's just um, it's ridiculous so this here doesn't look dynamic and it isn't dynamic it's definitely programmed by me but but the one thing about it is there's so much stuff going on around the war and you are fighting alongside these tanks that you really don't notice this you can see the tanks kinda of rallying here onto the road uh, now this looks cool I have to admit this actually looks really cool but I will change it because it worked now but all it's gonna take is uh, some friendly AI, not enemy, they'll run enemy down, but friendly AI, they won't. They'll get stuck on them and the tanks will just start running into one another. Uh, the other thing that seems to break, break tank columns regularly is bunny rabbits. I know it sounds ridiculous, but there are little bunny rabbits all around the Arma world. And one of these little bastards, all they got to do is get in front of, get on the road, and the tank column grinds to a halt. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's kind of cute, but it's, it's, it's frustrating if you're making a mission. I have literally had a bunny rabbit run out on the road, <laughs> stop the entire tank column, and just when they decided... Just when the AI decided to move off the road, the bunny rabbit would move off the road as well. So the tank column would straighten up, and then once they started moving along the road again, the bunny rabbit would run right back out onto the road and stop the tank column dead in their tracks. This whole thing happened for like five or six minutes until I shot the fucking bunny rabbit. So anyway, these uh, you can see the tanks are posting up here. Um, I think it's worth noting at this time that I am not a tacticianer. I spent a very short amount of time in the in the military myself, and I had nothing to do with any of this. I was a private, so I don't know shit about military tactics. So these guys, I post them up where I think it makes sense. Like I'm zooming in here right now, and these guys have, you know, they're they're somewhat hidden. They've got a low profile behind this. Uh, behind this hill here but they've got enough where they can engage to the left and anything coming towards them this guy I just put him there because he's being a nuisance and getting in the way and this guy here looks like he's got a really good position I mean nice cover he can engage everything he's got a full field of view but I think he's a kind of a sitting duck there so I probably will move him just kinda down this hill a bit you can see that uh, has been tripped the hint the hint up to the right says uh, uh, well, it actually says that this tank column here is going to remain static. That's right, because um, I couldn't figure out how to leapfrog these guys. So I'm going to bring these guys up to support them. And I guess I'm going to risk crashing into something right now. No, we're good. Now I'll just airwolf around, I suppose. Or I don't know what the hell I'm doing right now. Okay, so we're rolling in. Now you do see a, a smoke plume in front of us right now. This... Um, Normally I use this just for triggers, but this is actually kind of a zone where I'm kind of messing with cover and stuff like that, so uh, I just put a BMP there on fire. Uh, it's got nothing really relevant to do with the mission other than to provide cover when you're assaulting this hill. There will be more wrecks there, uh, but for now I just put it there because, well, for no other reason that I thought it kind of looked cool. So there it is. That smoke will always be there. That's intended. So I'm just, we're just going to circle around here a bit. See if this, you, you can start seeing my questionable pilot, piloting skills are not ter uh, terribly good. See the spacing here on these tanks? This is atrocious. Uh, this is just asking for trouble. So that definitely needs to be fixed. They have to be spaced out a bit more. And they're just going to post up, uh, summon this defilade. I didn't want to do it, but only because I needed the spacing from them. If I put them all on the hill, they started bouncing off one another. So we're just going to follow these tanks. There's a trigger straight ahead of us right now. 
and these tanks actually have you can see they have perfect visibility front left and right full 180 easy they can engage anything plus they have a little bit of cover by that little this little suburb or town or whatever you want to call it up here so just waiting for this guy to get in position yep and he, you can see the smoke is dissipating so that trigger has been hit so this column's going to stay here because they have this hill covered and the other column's going to leapfrog as I alluded to earlier alright so they're just getting to the road here um, the one thing to note uh, I've tried a, a bunch of different play styles or sorry um, what would you call them movement styles I guess with the tanks and the only thing that I found that keeps them consistently on the road and in formation is actually to have them unlimited and careless as their behavioral uh, you can see they're all turned out so they're well, I think you can see it but if you notice uh, the next time you look at the tank you will see the driver and the gunner are all t in their out position so you can actually see their heads this isn't terribly realistic uh, especially in a combat situation but the one fortunate thing is is once they get shot at they all turn in so at this point right now you wouldn't be seeing them turned out you'd be seeing them you wouldn't be seeing anything you'd just be seeing the tanks themselves in their combat ready position. Oh, 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 coffee, 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 get up, get out of lift, lift, lift. Oh, okay. Oh, fuck, that was a close one. There's, there's my piloting skills, or lack thereof, for you all to see. So we're just going to roll out here and just kind of watch them get into position. So this is the second to last uh, waypoint, if you will. Uh, they're just posting up here. They've got... They've got good field of view, left and right. You can see the hill off there to the right. Anything that crests that hill, they can engage it. But for the most part, they're just um, posting up. Yeah, so they're all... You see, they're all, their spacing is actually really, really good. It looks pretty tactical to me. I don't know. Alright, so we're just going to wait for him to trip the trigger. And once that, once that happens, we will move to our very last position. And the very last position actually turns out to be the end of the mission. This is uh, what you're here for. You're here to basically neutralize any, any enemy threat you perceive. And down here, well, we don't really know what's down. Well, I know what's down here, but I'm not going to tell you. I'd rather you play the mission and find out for yourself. But let's just say that part is a complete nightmare actually getting to this part here I've play tested this mission numerous times on my own and even in its somewhat broken state getting up to this area here took me just over three hours and uh, unfortunately I lost every time because the tanks were destroyed if the tanks are destroyed you have to get at least one tank to the end position if you can't do that you lose the mission so you can see the trigger has been tripped everybody is moving to their final position we're just gonna check and see that these guys are making it happen yeah looking good spacing uh, it's acceptable it's not the best but not bad so we'll just roll around here beautiful country isn't it a little bit desolate I'll admit but the one thing I like about Takistan is it does have trees for cover it does have vegetation there is a bit of green in it and it's not like uh, uh, what is it, Chernogorsk or whatever that, whatever the uh, tree map is that comes with Arma 2. That is just a uh, resource pig. Uh, this one here is a bit lighter, so I think a little uh, lower end PC will play it. So this here is the final objective. Uh, it doesn't look like much, um, but believe me, there's a lot of room down here to hide shit. There's a warehouse you can see kind of below us that's easy to spawn uh, enemy AI. Um, the one thing I didn't I didn't mention is when you are fighting this you are there's a war going on whether you're in the game or not so basically there is um, blue for and op for blue for being your side op for being oppositional forces they fight each other whether you're in the war or not um, what your goal is is to help move the line forward the line will not move forward without your help uh, depending on how many players are, are in the game, I'm aiming for probably a top, 
uh, amount of players of between 20 and 24. Depending on how many players are in the game, it will offset the enemy forces, so there are actually always more of them than there are of you, just to keep the challenge up. And the nice thing about it is, is the AI spawns dynamically, so they are run off a math trigger, and once they reach a certain point, uh, below a certain value, they will dynamically spawn a new uh, a new um, platoon or squad or, or whatever it is they're spawning, just to keep you engaged the whole time. Uh, all of the spawn points are out of sight, so you cannot visibly ever see anybody spawn. That was the main goal. I, I wanted this to appear like a war seamless, but I wanted it to be... Uh, very PC friendly. I didn't want it to eat up resources on older computers like I actually play this right now Right now. I'm actually playing this on a uh, What is it a an, an i7 2700 2600 2700 something like that right now, but I actually play test this on a very old uh, first generation Conroe e6600 overclock to 2.7 and it'll play on that mission fairly smoothly as well, as well too. I can keep about 30 frames per second in there. Until some of the heavy stuff goes on, it will dip down to, you know, 20, 19, 18, that when, when there's a lot of action, and I'm talking artillery and all kinds of effects and stuff like that, then it'll drop down to the those frame rates. But I figure uh, an E6600 is what, probably six or seven years old now, the first generation. And I'm sure that most gamers have something newer than that. So if it'll play, if it's playable on the E6600, I think that gives me a, you know, six or seven year window of gamers that are able to actually load and play this mission fairly seamlessly. And yeah, you can see they're all full, pulling into their final position. This is tank column two rolling in right now. Uh, they're all rolling into their set waypoints. I really. I really don't know where the hell is that guy going. Don't want to hit the trees here. Okay, yeah, oh no, okay, that's right. It's been a while since I put these markers here, that, so I'm not exactly 100% sure. Yeah, he's going to the compound, but where's this guy going? Oh, see, and this is why you do this. You fly, you got great mobility, you know, you can see what's going on, and then you can find out where that guy is supposed to... Oh, there's where he's supposed to go. Why didn't he just come down the field? So yeah, this is perfect a perfect example of why you do this because that tank shouldn't be there. That just that is a broken uh, broken dynamic. You can see now he's just he's stuck there for a while until the AI kind of did their math and figured out, okay, this is what I have to do to get to this waypoint. But it just looks ridiculous. It it there's no authenticity to it at all. And you'll notice as well, too, even though his main turret is turned towards the war, his back is turned against it. Even this guy's side, which I can live with, it looks like that guy's back is turned to the war as well. So this is why we do it. And even though everybody made it, nobody crashed, The, as far as I'm concerned, this portion of the mission is still broken until their spacing is correct, until they're all facing forward until they're all proceeding as expected which they're not so I guess I'm just gonna roll in here for a landing and take a closer look at them hope they don't land on this debris nope no nope, oh oh come on oh you can do it Duke you can do it you can do it money all right I'm just gonna get out and check these guys out so these guys, you can see they're facing the hill. That is the direction of the war. That's where I want them to be facing. These guys are all doing the same. Very nice. This guy's sides turn to it. Looks a little bit wonky, but it's definitely livable. Yep, these guys are in their right positions. Looks pretty good. And this is a clown that couldn't figure out how to get there. You can see his ass is turned directly towards the war. Even though his turret's facing the right way, that's wrong. He'll be he'll be taken out with one shot. No good. Yeah, don't like that at all. This guy's okay, I guess. Looked a little bit worse from the air, but... That's it. That is the mission right there. So that's how I do it. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, the wrong way to do it. 
I have no idea personally. All I know is, is this is the best way I have found to actually uh, play edit missions. Playing them doesn't always help. I know that uh, if you've ever been to uh, any of the, uh, like the Bohemia Interactive community and spent any time in the in the mission editor portion of it, uh, of the community, a lot of people tell you play test, play test, play test. Place testing doesn't work all the time. Uh, you waste an awful lot of time and you don't really get to see the results for yourself properly. So, you know, you can always spawn yourself as an independent or a civilian and make the make yourself friendly to everyone uh, the same goes with the chopper and you can fly over the war and watch the war happen without actually engaging and in this case here what I would do personally is um, once I start adding my other elements the artillery um, the oppositional forces I will just have the math set so the oppositional forces are always at a disadvantage and just see how they how they deal with the with my side the the blue four and you know just keep on turning up the numbers dialing up the numbers a little bit and seeing how it goes the whole time flying over it and pro probably recording it too because there's always things you miss when you record it uh, you play over it again a few times and there's things I spotted even just watching right now and commentating over it rather than uh, the first time I flew through this so Anyway, I hope you uh, learned something from this. Um, if you like the video, please uh, uh, like it uh, or add a comment or, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Any feedback from you is definitely helpful. I don't know if this helped you at all. It certainly helped me a shit ton, but again, I'm not 100% sure if it helped you. But if it did, didn't, um, please let me know. And I will try and cater my videos a little bit better to help you out a bit better. And maybe we can learn something together. So anyway, that'll do it for me today. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, take care, YouTube. Bye-bye.